Hi, everyone, and welcome to lectures 22 and 23. We will be discussing the discussion section, the abstract, putting it all together, and oral presentations. So let's start off with the discussion section and the abstract. So what goes into the discussion section? Well, traditionally, it's a reverse funnel approach. So if you remember in your, in your introductions, you started off very broad and then got more and more specific. Now you're going to start off quite specifically and then get quite broad. Now, you're supposed to provide an interpretation of your results. In other words, what it is that you've learned from your research. But of course, we didn't talk about results for this particular um, project. So what are you going to do? You're going to please assume that you obtained significant results in the direction you hypothesized. In other words, everything came out the way you thought it would. Now that you've done that, compare your results to those of the studies mentioned in your literature review. If your results are different, why do you think they're different? How did you address the gap from the introduction? How in your study did you address the gap that you mentioned in your introduction section? What are the strengths of your study? What are the limitations of your study? And I ask you, don't be concerned about your limitations. Everyone has limitations to their studies. And I think identifying them makes you all that more of a stronger researcher. OK, so don't be afraid to list your limitations. Now, consider the following when discussing your strengths and limitations. The experimental design confounding or extraneous variables, sample size, internal validity, external validity, and measurement validity. And you can consider other pieces too, but those are the main ones for you to take into account. Now I want to do next is give you an example of some limitations from a discussion section. I don't anticipate yours being as long as this, your limitation section, of course, but this should hopefully give you some ideas. My research had several limitations. The study was primarily limited by its small sample size. The sample size could, could have been expanded by including an earlier start date in the data collection would have increased the time needed to survey more participants. More contact between the researcher and the target sample may have increased participation. Ideally, the number of participants would have been more evenly distributed across gender, year in school, athletes, etc. The participants represented a narrow range of ethnicity, ages, etc. A larger sample with more diversity would have benefited our results, including Multiple colleges, groups on campus could have diversified the ethnicities, ages, etc. represented in the sample. My study would have benefited from a question regarding participants may have had a better understanding of survey items had a definition of been included on the questionnaire. Okay. Now, make suggestions for future research. If you were to perform the study again, how might you change it? What new questions does your study raise? Now, this goes directly off of your limitations, right? Your limitations are simply opportunities for future research. So those really go hand in hand. Make a final summary statement of your conclusions and comment on the importance and relevance of your findings. How are your findings related to the big picture? This should also be about 175 to 225 words in length. Okay. So 
we've already talked about the the introduction section and how that turns into a background section. Um, but for the methods and discussion sections, center the boldface words methods and discussion at the beginning of each of the respective sections. Okay. So the introduction, remember, is 175 to 225 words. It's now called the background. Any details pertaining to conducting your study should be changed to the past tense, in particular, the hypothesis. Now, any changes to the section should be noted via track changes in word or highlighting. Okay. Methods. No specified word count. That stays the same. This should also be written in the past tense. Any changes to this section should be noted via track changes in word or highlighting. discussion, 175 to 225 words, any details pertaining to conducting your study should be in the past tense, should be in the past tense. So that's how you're going to do those three main sections. Okay. Now the abstract is a summary of the paper in just 120 to 150 words. Your research hypothesis in one to two sentences. The participants, including total number and number per group, materials and procedures. Results, remember your results are simply a going to be a single sentence stating how the results came out. And remember they came out exactly the way you predicted and the implications of these results. Okay. The abstract will be a one page document that's placed right after the cover page. So you have a cover page, then the abstract, and then you start off with your, with your intro. Center the bold face word abstract on a new line. Do not indent the first line of the abstract and only use one paragraph. Do not use citations. No need for citations here. You don't get a lot of words. Let's you can use them all the way you need to, right? Without bothering about those. So those are the instructions. Now I'm going to present you with a couple of examples of abstracts. And these all are under 150 words. Okay. Okay, let's look at the first one. This study examined the effects of short-term food deprivation on two cognitive abilities, concentration and perseverance. Undergraduate students, N equals 51, were tested on concentration and perseverance tasks after one of three levels of food deprivation, none, 12 hours, or 24 hours. We predicted that food deprivation would impair both concentration scores and perseverance time. Food deprivation had no significant effect on concentration scores, which is consistent with recent research on the effects of food deprivation. Now, this does have a couple citations. Like I said, you don't need those. However, participants in the 12 hour deprivation group spent significantly less time on the perseverance task than those in both the control and 24 hour deprivation groups, suggesting that short term deprivation may affect some aspects of cognition and not others. Okay. Here's another one. When are men more emotionally expressive than women? 100 male and 100 female undergraduates were individually shown a sad or a happy film while being observed by one or both of their parents. Judges blind to condition rated participants facial expressions and used a lacrimeter measured their tear value. Men cried more during the sad movie but laughed less during the happy movie than did women. Interaction P less than 0.02. Again, you don't have to have those specific P values um, because you do not have um, that information. Okay. However, men in the father watching condition with low self esteem, according to the Darley self concept scale, cried less than all other participants, P less than 
It is suggested that sex differences in emotional expression are moderated by the valence of the emotion and for men by self-esteem and conditions of being observed. Okay, so you can get a lot of information in, in that small uh, range there. Okay. Final paper, let's, let's talk this through. Let's go through this. So you start with your cover page, right? You've got your title of your paper, your name, and Westchester University on three separate lines. Next page is your abstract. Next page is your background, same as your introduction section. Remember, you don't label this one, you just start off. Next section is your methods, which you do label with the word methods, bold in the center at the top of the page. Then you go into your additionally labeled sections of participants, materials, design, and procedures. Next is your discussion. Discussion goes bold, remember, at the top of the page centered. Do your discussion, then references, just like you had done before on a new page. And then appendices from your method section, also starting on a new page. Okay. All right. So hopefully that identifies for you or shows you exactly how you want to lay out your paper. Now let's turn our attention to the oral presentations, okay? They're going to be about five to eight minutes long with two to three minutes for questions. You'll be presenting using PowerPoint. Now, you definitely may have note cards, no problem about that, but you should not simply be reading from them. Okay, so how do you start off? Overview of your study, title of the research proposal, and your name. In the background information, you want to provide three to five main points of pertinent background information from your introduction, your topic, the significance, and the gap. Okay, make sure to include your topic, significance, and the gap. You can, um, of course, and you may very well want to refer to the literature as well. Next, your research hypothesis. Then we get into the methods. You want to talk about your participants, your materials, the design, and the procedure. Now, remember, as you describe your participants, as you break them out and talk about how many you had of, of different genders or different ages, that is entirely up to you because there is no data here. So it's, it's entirely up to you how you wish to discuss that. Okay. Then there will be some questions from the audience, including myself. And you will be graded on both your oral presentation and your participation during others' presentations. So please, you know, uh, give your attention to other people's presentations, come up with a question here and there, and you'll be in good shape. Okay. That's all I have for you for this particular lecture. Um, be well, and I will talk to you later.